want to do is we want to combine our knowledge of how we broke down this, <laughs> this area in the first place. We created this rectangle. And I want to try and think, how can I find the fourth? Firstly, we agreed that when I rotate it around the x-axis, what kind of shape are we creating on the, on the base there? Circle. We're trying to create a little circle around. And if, if you imagine just taking one of these single rectangles and rotating it around, if you're rotating that around, that would be a 3D shape, actually. Yeah, it'd be a cylinder. It'd be a cylinder. So, uh, Ben, can you remind me, what's the volume of the cylinder again? There's, there's a pie in there somewhere. Pi. Uh, uh, yes, okay, so remember, a cylinder, uh, like this, right, we've got, <laughs> the, we've got the, the pi. Yeah, we've got the surface area here. Yeah. Or the, yeah. the area of the space, we've got pi r squared and we've got h here. So we've got pi r squared times h. So if I could find, for example, the area of one of these, that would be really helpful. That would be really helpful. And then similarly with these rectangles, I could just add up all these cylinders together. Right. In the same way that I add up all these rectangles to find the area underneath the curve. If I added up all my cylinders that make up this shape, even though they get bigger and bigger and bigger, I can find the volume that's created when I rotate around the x-axis, right? Okay, but, hang on, I know the form for the volume of the cylinder, that's pretty easy. How does that incorporate into this? Well, I want to think really carefully, right? I've got an h somewhere, and I, and I need a, a radius somewhere, okay? It's a radius of the equation of the y. It's the radius of the equation of the y. So you're saying, where... Because it's changing? Yeah, the radius is changing, right? The radius is changing. So you're saying the radius would be these values here? How high the curve goes? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Right? Can you see how, if I've got lots of these discs that are here, imagine like cutting up a piece of salami. When you have like salami, right? You're cutting up these little discs, right? You're cutting up these little discs. What would the radius be? Would it change each time? It would change each time, just yeah, like these rectangles, yeah. right? So the radius, right? What would the radius be, Mitch? The y value. Yeah, can you see how the height of the curve would be the radius of that distance. So, yeah. so imagine, um, let's go back to the cone here, right? The radius, because I'm just rotating this around the x-axis, the radius of each of these discs would just be from the center to the end. The center to the end, and it's changing each time. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. So I want to say that the radius is equal to the height of the curve. Well, we can just call that, but okay that the radius is equal to y, that's the height of the curve. The tricky part is the actual height in terms of the actual cylinder I've got here. I can see that the, the height of the cylinder is related to some of the x values here. Right? The x values here. What's actually happening, remember, with these discs or these rectangles, I'm trying to get them as small as possible, as close together as possible. And we had a notation that we referred to these x values getting infinitely closer and closer together. What do we call that? When these, when these x values got really, really close together. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, remember we were talking about delta x, like right? dx, where these, these, these x values get closer and closer and closer together until they're pretty much the same thing. But they can't be. But yeah, they can't be. Right. So h would equal to the changing, the changing x values that are getting closer and closer together, or we call it dx. Can we put this all together now? I know that the volume of one of these cylinders could be found here, okay? And I know that the radius is equal to that y value, the height of the curve. I know that the height is that thickness there, or the changing x, the dx. If I put that all together, we can say that v is equal to the integral from a to b, where a is my, a and b are my bounds. Well, what's my formula of the cylinder? Pi r squared times h. So I've got a pi in there somewhere. But that's a constant, so I'm just going to write it outside the integral. It's not going to affect it. Just pretend that's just like a... Like it's just a number, right? It's 3.14, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's a big one. Number. It is a big one. What's the radius of The... The y. The y, the height curve. But when I, in my formula, what do I have to do with my radius? I have to square it. So I'm going to have y squared. And what's the last thing? Height. Dx. Yeah, height or dx. And that's it. Oh, the just volume... Like, just like a normal... The volume of any curve that's rotated around the x-axis can be found by taking pi multiplied by the integral from a to b of y squared dx. What, what that actually means is, 
whatever equation that I'm giving you, so if I example, this would be like y equals to x, so this is like y equals to x squared plus 2, right? All you have to do is square the equation I've given you and then integrate it from a to b and then multiply by pi. Okay. Can we copy that down there? Yep. I'll give you some time for that.